paper introduces the different steps of a neurofeedback protocol. In the first place, you need to monitor your EEG data in order to make sure that you have the right quality of signal. On this display, you can see the raw EEG data on the left and a reconstruction of the EEG activity in every voxel of the cortex on the right. Red corresponds to an activation of the cerebral activity, while blue corresponds to the deactivation of this signal. On the left-hand side, we can see the raw EEG data that is used to generate this map. This signal is not cleaned, and it is possible to activate some form of artifact projection and correction of the signal, as you can see here. Such denoising of the data is going to dramatically improve the quality of the reconstruction you can see on the right hand side. Once we have made sure that we can correctly identify the cerebral activity, it is now possible to have a deeper look into the application design. Broadband areas are different anatomical regions of the human cortex. Some of them may relate to specific function of the brain. Consequently, it is possible to restrict your analysis to a few meaningful areas of the brain and provide a subject a real-time feedback on the activity of these areas. Such feedback can be a binary signal, auditory or visual, indicating the presence of a particularly noticeable activity in the targeted areas of the cortex. Thanks to this amazing technology, users can then reinforce or turn down specific brain functions such as depression, stress, concentration, sleep or even performance.